I probably want to also maybe try to um, reset the priorities of what we're trying to do in the big picture. And I, it kind of came to me as I sat and listened to both sides. And that's what's so great about committee hearings. You get to hear both sides. And if you really listen, you can really hear something. As many of you know, um, I do a lot of work with trauma, where it's trauma-informed care, ACEs, whether it's uh, what I call post-traumatic street disorder, uh, you know, the trauma that people in disadvantaged communities experience. And as I listened to this, the sheriff's uh, Julie Robinson, this, this hero, about defending herself and her, par her partner, I realized how much trauma she's experienced. And then when it, I listened to my colleague to my left, and he talked about someone that he worked with or he knew very well that um, was involved in officer-involved shooting that traumatized him to the point where he took his own life. And then I hear from my colleague to my right to the end who um, kind of broke down and about just having law enforcement in her home and worried about her family, um, especially as an African-American male, I, I can empathize with her and I know what that feeling's like. And so on both sides, especially the young man that testified today, um, we're all traumatized, and that's why it's, it's risen to this level. But I hope everybody understands one of the main reasons we have to take care of this and we have to get this resolved, because we are all traumatized. When an officer is killed by a criminal, they are traumatized, the whole sector, they're traumatized. And it has an effect on them that I think sometimes law enforcement, just like in the African-American Latino community, we don't always seek mental health. In fact, it is probably frowned upon on both our communities, and we all need it. You know, part of this discussion should be about what happens after that happens in our communities to both sides. We're not even having that conversation about how to heal that because that is probably why it keeps festering and getting worse and worse. And so I would like to reset the conversation, as I believe and I hope, as we move out of this committee to where we can actually have some substantive discussions on how we can move forward um, to resolve this. Uh, I'm looking at page 3C where it says, neither this section nor section 197 provide a peace officer with a defense to manslaughter in violation of section 192 if that person was killed due to the criminally negligent conduct of the officer, including situations in which the victim is a person other than the person that the officer was seeking to arrest, retain in custody, or defend against, or if the necessity for the use of deadly force was created by the peace officer's criminal negligence. I don't think law enforcement means if our law enforcement officer does a criminal act because they had to make a split second decision that we can't judge a criminal act. But I'm hearing conversations both ways and I hope that we can come together. If there need to be some clarifying language to ensure that that 1% of the nine of the 100 percent and that the 99 percent are clouded with what the one percent does then let's work together to do that to move this forward um, so that we have things in place so that we do create better officers i don't believe we need to go to the lowest denominator i believe we can set standards policies, procedures, and training so that we get the best and the brightest and the ones that can be law enforcement officers. Not every, I don't believe everybody can be law enforcement officers. That's why you have training. That's why you have a whole system to weed them out. And if we're talking about having a higher standard, a higher standard of possible training in the f future because we've now, two, 392 have now set a higher standard, then let's do that. Look, 
I wanted to be a police officer, but I don't have 20-20 vision. <laughs> and also, I'm old. They didn't have a, they didn't have all that eye stuff and get your eyes corrected to get to 2020. So I didn't make it. I would submit to you that I was an unreasonable standard. But now that I'm older, yeah, I do want to have an officer with 2020 vision <laughs> to be able to see what's going on, to be able to make split second decisions with all of their facilities at 100% capabilities. And so, um, my, it's not a question, but it is a, a firm request, if not as chair of this committee, um, almost a demand from both sides that you get past the trauma. If you need me to get you somebody to help you have some talking sessions or a divorce attorney or somebody to get you together, get rid of all the, the pain and talk about how we can stop future pain because that's what I see not only here, but I've also seen with law enforcement, I also see in this audience, there's a lot of pain that as legislators, you know, we always say we can't legislate pain away, we can't legislate racism, we can't, but we can, we can put in place um, laws that help us move in that direction. And I hear from both sides that you wanna get there. It's just a question of how. And I'm hoping that as it moves out of here, we can get there. 